Yo, what's going on, guys? Tanmay for Simple Snippets, and welcome back to another video tutorial under Operational Research. And in this video tutorial, we are going to be learning what is linear programming problems and how to solve them. So this is just a theoretical introductory video on linear programming problems. So we are not actually going to solve any problem, but we are going to understand what exactly is linear programming and why do we need it, and essentially what does it help us achieve. So this is very important that you understand why you need linear programming before actually. Solving a numerical, and definitely we'll be solving numerical in further videos. But if you're not sure about what exactly is linear programming and how does it help us, make sure you watch this video till the end. And this is going to be a short theory video. So with that being said, let's start off with linear programming problems. So a little bit theory on linear programming. So linear programming (LP) is one of the simplest way to perform optimization. So talking about linear programming, and no, this is not related to the actual programming that is the coding part. This is not. You typing in some code. This is a mathematical domain, and operational research is a subject which is there for IT and computer science students to understand how to mathematically deal with real world scenarios. For example, we also have some videos on traveling salesman. We have videos on sequencing problem. So all these topics come under operational research. And if you are an IT student, MCA student, computer science student, definitely you will have this subject of operational research. So linear programming, as I mentioned, is not really. Actually, typing in code or programming, it is a mathematical subject, and basically, it is used to perform optimization. Now, optimization can be defined as the best possible outcome with the best use of resources. So, when you say I have optimized my code or I have optimized my process, it means that your process is giving you the best output by using the best use of the resources. Okay. So, linear programming, also called linear optimization, is a method to achieve the best outcome in a mathematical model. Whose requirements are represented by linear relationships. So linear relationships are again mathematical relationships in which two or more quantities are related to each other, and they can usually be depicted by a single line. So this is something which is mathematical. You can Google it out. I'm not going to get into a lot of theory. So now let's actually take a real world scenario and real world case of a factory of a chocolate factory, and we'll understand how linear programming will help us. Okay, so consider a chocolate manufacturing company. So we have a chocolate manufacturing company which produces only two types of chocolates. So we have chocolate A and we have chocolate B. Now both the chocolates require milk and cocoa, which is the chocolate element which adds that chocolate flavor. So it requires milk and cocoa. Okay, so there are two raw materials which are required to create chocolate A and chocolate B. Now to manufacture each unit of A and B, following quantities are required of milk and cocoa. Okay. So chocolate A requires one unit of milk and three units of cocoa, and chocolate B requires one unit of milk and two units of cocoa. Now the company kitchen has a particular limit on these raw materials. So for a particular time, it has only five units of milk and twelve units of cocoa. So we are just assuming this, and on each sale, the company makes a profit of rupees six per unit of A sold. That means for every unit of chocolate A. Which is sold, company makes six rupees profit and rupees five per unit of B. Okay. Now the real question is that the company wants to maximize this profit. So how many units of A and B should it produce respectively? So now the company is having a question that it wants to maximize the profit. That is, it wants to gain the highest amount of profit using these raw materials, which is five units of milk and twelve units of cocoa. And it wants to know what is the quantity of chocolate A and chocolate B that it should make to make the highest profit. So now let's take three cases for example. Now the case one is that the company decides to make all chocolate A. Now if you observe, the company will make a profit of rupees six if it sells chocolate A, and it will make a profit of rupees five if it's if it sells chocolate B, right? Which means that A is giving more profit. So let's assume that the company decides to make all chocolate A's. So the number of chocolates possible. With five units of milk and twelve units of cocoa are as follows. So to make chocolate A, that is one unit of chocolate A requires one unit of milk and three units of cocoa, right? So how many chocolates can we make when we have five units of milk and twelve units of cocoa? So we know that three into four is equal to twelve, right? So we can make four units of chocolate A because then the cocoa will get over, right? So number of chocolates possible is four. So what is the quantity of milk needed? So for one chocolate A, one unit of milk is needed. For for four unit of chocolates, we need four units of milk, and the cocoa would be four into three because for one unit of chocolate we need three units of cocoa, right? 
so the cocoa that is needed is 12 now if you see we had 5 units of milk and out of that we used 4 units of milk so 1 unit is left and we used all the cocoa because we had 12 units and we used 12 units of cocoa so 0 units of cocoa left so let's calculate the profit that company earns by selling 4 chocolates that is 4 unit of chocolate A so it makes 6 rupees profit when it sells 1 chocolate unit of chocolate A so 6 4s are 24 so company will make 24 rupees profit if it decides to make all chocolate A's using this raw materials so now let's take case 2 wherein the company decides to make all units of chocolate B instead of chocolate A now the company has decided to make all chocolate B's okay so the number of chocolate B's possible with 5 unit of milk and 12 unit of cocoa depends upon its requirements right so each unit of B requires 1 unit of milk and 2 units of cocoa so the number of chocolates possible here is going to be 5 right because 5 into 2 units of cocoa will give you 10 and 5 into 1 unit of milk will give you 5 so the milk will get over right so I'm gonna write number of chocolates possible 5 which is 1 extra compared to chocolate A in case 1 now the milk needed for 5 chocolate bars of chocolate B is going to be 5 because every unit of chocolate B requires 1 unit of milk and the cocoa needed is going to be 10 which we just calculated over here now the milk left is going to be 0 but in this case the cocoa which is left is 2 units and we cannot do anything with these 2 units because we are left with 0 milk so we cannot create any kind of chocolate now now let's calculate the profit in this case so for 1 unit of chocolate B the company is making 5 rupees profit so for 5 units of chocolate B it would be 5 into 5 which is 25 rupees and now you can see that for case 2 that is when the company decides to make chocolate B it is earning more profit compared to case 1 even when per unit profit of chocolate A is higher the case 2 is giving more profit right and the reason for that is because chocolate B requires less units of cocoa compared to chocolate A right because it requires one unit less so even the resources are supposed to be taken into consideration right because we want to optimize the profit which means that we want to use the resources properly and efficiently and get the maximum profit out of it but now let's see case 3 wherein we decide to make both chocolate A and B and utilize these resources in the best possible way so in case 3 the company decides to make 2 units of chocolate A and 3 units of chocolate B so 2 plus 3 the total number of chocolates possible is 5 now the milk needed for creating 2 units of chocolate A is going to be 1 plus 1 which is 2 and milk needed for creating 3 units of chocolate B is going to be 3 which is 2 plus 3 which is going to be 5 right so I'm going to write 5 over here so milk left is going to be 0 similarly the cocoa needed for 2 units of A is going to be 3 into 2 which is 6 so 6 and cocoa needed for 3 units of B is 3 into 2 which is again 6 so 6 plus 6 is going to give you 12 so the total is 12 and then the cocoa left is 0 so in case 3 you can see that we have utilized the resources efficiently that is both of the milk and cocoa are totally utilized used and now let's actually calculate the profit so your profit is going to be for 2 units of A that is 6 into 2 because we are making a profit of 6 per unit of A so we are making 2 chocolates of A right so 2 into 6 is going to be 12 plus 3 units of B so 3 into 5 right so it is going to be 15 and this is going to give us rupees 27 so now you can see that the case 3 is giving us the maximum profit and this is because we have used the resources in the best possible way and we created both the different types of chocolates to optimize the process and give us the maximum profit so this is where linear programming will help us and this is a very basic scenario but this is what happens in the real world right companies manufacture different products and they want to make the maximum profit and the way they can make maximum profit is by using the resources efficiently as well as taking into the consideration the profit margin right so both these quantities need to be considered when you want to have the maximum profit so this is where linear programming helps and that is why it is used in real world scenarios to optimize and maximize profits and in similar way this same technique can be used to minimize the loss as well so the way it works to maximize profit can be reversed and in the same way it can be applied to minimize the loss as well so this was just an example that I wanted to show you and in further videos we learn how to actually analyze such kind of problems and to formulate the actual problem 
and further then we'll see the graphical method in which we can solve them and maximize or minimize depending upon what the question requires. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you understood this real world scenario of a linear programming problem. And these are the types of numericals where we will be applying this linear programming problem techniques to maximize profit or minimize loss depending upon what the question is. And that's it for this video guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments how you like this video. Share it with your friends as well. And if you haven't yet subscribed, make sure you subscribe to this channel. So thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.